Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be creating a Fortnite style keyboard for inside of your games where you can program in the key presses that the player makes and then play it back. Now that's one that I've just set up previously so if we just press the reset button and just make sure it's pushed properly and we press play nothing happens and then we can just Tap in some randomness, and then press play. You can see it plays it back to us. Yay! And then if we add some more notes to the end of that song, and then press play, it will play it again, but with the new notes, until we press the reset button. So pretty cool. And it's not too hard to set this up. Uh, one of the things that you will need to do is download my sound effects that I've made for you guys. Um, I have a keyboard, I've been learning how to play, yay! Um, and so I've recorded different notes for you guys and aligned them all so that you can do this, <laughs> yay! And then you'll be using the exact same sounds that we're using here. Obviously if you've got your own sounds, go ahead, if you want to edit them, do what you want. So we're just going to delete all of these, nah, goodbye! Mm, do we want to, do we want to break references in the list? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, they're all gone. So there we go. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build our basic white key. So right click, blueprint class, actor. We're going to call this white key, underscore BP. Underscore BP. Now we're going to open this up. And what we'll do first is add a component. And this is going to be a cube. We'll drag this into the world so that we can see how large this is in comparison to our player character. Just make sure that they're kind of together. And then inside of our blueprint, we're just going to resize this so we think that it's a nice size. Now, obviously, um, if you want these to be easier to hit, you're going to want them to be a little bit larger. There we go. It's a bit thick, really. Let's make it a little bit longer just to get rid of that thickness. That had so many Cs, thick with extra Cs. And we're just going to rename this to key underscore mesh just so that we know what it is in our hierarchy. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is just select our default scene root, add a new component, and we're going to call this well, we're not going to call it, we're going to get a text render. And by default, we're going to need to flip this on the blue axis 180 and on the green 90 degrees. And we're just going to move this down to the bottom of our key. Raise it up a little bit. Change the text color to black so that it's visible on our key. There we go, kind of make it centered as best we can. There we are. We might need to move that a little bit. It's not quite centered, but we're going to be doing something with this later on, so it's not really that much of a hassle right now. So what are we going to do with this? Well, we need it to play a sound. So let's open the blueprint up itself, go into the event graph. We're just going to get rid of these for now. We're going to go ahead and right click our key mesh, add an event on over, uh, not on overlap, on hit. Now the reason I'm not using overlap is because when the keys are all really close together, if you're using overlap and you're using a, uh, a trigger box, it's going to be really easy for you to accidentally activate keys that you don't want to be using. So we're going to be using hit. So when our character jumps on one of these, it's going to activate. Other actor, we're going to cast to a third person character or whatever the name of your character is. I'm using third person character. I'm just using the default. You guys know me. That's what I do. And now what we're going to do from this is we're just going to play a sound 2d and right click sound and promote this to a variable now we're doing this because we're going to need lots of different keys and we don't want to set up lots of different blueprints for each note so we're going to have a variable that controls which note we're using we're going to call this note and then we're going to click this little eyeball to make this exposed this is going to allow us to change this outside of our blueprint editor and inside of our actual world here so right now what we're doing is we're just going to see if our first, per if our third person character rather hits the key. If they do, we're going to play a sound. But we don't actually have a sound plugged in. We have made this exposed. So what we can now do is, you see, when we select our key here, we have default note, none. We're going to go into our piano keys. And the first note that we're going to do is going to be the first C on our octave. Now I've given you an octave of keys. And so an octave is C to C, so we're going to C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And I've also given you the flats and the sharps. Now, when you see a flat and a sharp, you see this, we've got a, a D, B, 4. The B is a 
is a flat. So D, little b for a flat. Uh, if it was a hashtag, it would be a sharp, a hashtag, a hash. It's an octothorpe, if you want to get really fancy. It's an octothorpe uh, would be a sharp. Um, but here you can see we've got a, a D uh, flat and an E flat. A D flat would be the same as a, a C sharp because it goes you can go either way so c and then up one is c sharp or it's going to be down from a, a d so it's going to be a d flat but we're just using all flats just to, it doesn't matter music theory it doesn't matter who cares move on let's go dean drag that drag that c4 in there drop it in there we go now if we press play and jump on this you can hear that it's playing the note yay ding 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 it still says a text though so we're gonna go back in here and edit this around and what we're gonna do is in our construct script, we're going to drag out our text render and we're going to set text. There we are, and plug that in. And what we're going to set the text to is going to be just our um, our note name. So we're just going to drag out our note, get note, drag out from this, get object name. And we can just plug this in and it will change our string to a text or rather a text to a string. There we go. Compile, and now when we go back in here, this will say C4. Woo! C4 is dangerous, don't play with C4. Now what we're going to do is just copy these out, and because, as I said earlier, we had an octave, which oct is eight, we're going to create eight of these little dudes. There we are. Nice. It's alt and drag, for those of you that don't know the quick... Uh, way to copy and paste something or to duplicate. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag in the next note. So we've gone C4, the next one is a D4, then it's going to be E, F, G, A4, because we're still in the C octave, so even though it's an A, it technically comes after this C. Because you start with a C, you don't start with an A. Don't question it. Just don't. B4, and then this one will be a C5. Now we're going to deal with the black notes later. The reason we're going to deal with the black keys later is because they're going to be using exactly the same logic. And for now, we're just going to make these and make sure that this all works. And then we can just duplicate later on. So we've got all this loveliness. What we're going to do, right click, material, white keys underscore M, open this guy up, hold three and left click for a three vector. We're going to make this slightly off-white, not pure white, because pure white and pure black never really looked that good. Do it again. Hold M and left click for a multiply. Put this into the emissive, and we're going to change this to a lovely green color. And then we're going to hold S on the keyboard and click for a scalar parameter. We're going to call this glow and plug this into the multiply. We're going to leave it as a zero for now, because we don't want this to be green at all by default. We're going to change this using the blueprint later on. We'll apply that. There we go, applied, lovely jubbly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our white key blueprint once again. Go to the event graph, right click, begin plate. Now what we're going to do is drag out our key mesh. Drag from this, create a dynamic material instance. Our source material is going to be our white keys underscore M. Plug this in from our key mesh, set material. Helps if I could spell. There we are. Now our material is just going to be the return value of the material instance that we just created. Drag out from the return value once more, and we're going to set a scalar parameter value. You remember we called it glow, and this is how we're going to uh, control our glow. We're going to have this down with the it event because we want to change the way the key looks when it's being played. So after play sound, we are going to do a timeline. And we're going to play this from start. And now what we're going to do on the timeline is change the length down to 0.5 and add a float track. Right click, add a key at zero. We want a value of zero. Then halfway through this, which is 0.25, we're going to want a high value for lots of glow. So 20, add another key, 0.5. At the end, we want zero again. Now what we'll do is head back to the event graph, plug our new track into our value and our update into our set scalar parameter value. Now what that will do is it will change our glow over time as we press our keys. As you see, pretty cool, right? So now we've got this working 
and our keys are playable. We need to create a system that allows us to save these uh, into a singular track and play them back afterwards. What we're going to do is we're going to cheat, right click our, right, our white key, duplicate, and we're going to call this play button underscore bp. We're going to Oh, I've not renamed the other one. Play button. Play, we'll call this underscore button underscore BP. There we are. We'll open this one up. And now we don't want any material stuff going on. We don't really need to do any of this. But what we do need is our notes still. We don't want the play sound for now. But we do want to make sure it's only happening with a third person character. We're going to our construct script. Delete all of this because we don't want to change our text render anymore. Press compile and in the text render text box, we're going to just put that to play. And we'll compile once more. And now if we drag this into the world, we should have a key with play written on it. And we do. There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll head back to this little fella here. We've got our note. What we're going to do is click this little circle up here by variable type and turn this into an array. So an array is just a list of data. And what we're going to use this for is to decide how to play our notes. What order we're going to play our notes in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just get a copy. And this is just going to get the first note in the array. And then we're going to play this. Now, with arrays, normally you go through a loop, you would do a for each loop and it would go through the array for you and do it all. The problem with a for each loop is that it tries to do it all as quickly as possible. Um, and f and for each loop doesn't work with a delay. So we're going to have to build our own loop. And we're going to do this with a custom event. So we will set timer by event. Okay, so when somebody presses the play key, set timer by event, we're going to set our time. Now, this is how quickly the notes will play. I'm going to have them play every 1.3 seconds, and we are going to have this looping. We're going to drag out from event, custom event, we'll call this play notes. Then what we will do is we've obviously got this already. Yay, we will play sound 2D. And the sound we'll play will be whichever note we pull out from the array. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, what we need to do is we need to make sure that our notes are getting updated. So open up the white key BP. Now what we need is to create a new variable. And the variable type is going to be our play button BP. See here, play button BP. And we'll call this play ref. And we're going to expose this compile, drag this out, get the play ref. What we will then do is we will get note. So we're getting the array of notes and then we will just add. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to add it to the end of the set scalar parameter because that's going to do it for every single frame that this is uh, updating. So we're going to drag out from finished and then put the add and plug our note from the white key into there and that will add that to our array. So now what we will get if we were to press a note, if we jump on play, it will play that note. Or no, it won't because we haven't set it up. See, we've got errors. The error will just say access none, see access none. The reason it's doing that is because we haven't given these the reference. So we'll select all of these, play ref, little drop down, play button BP. Now if we press play and jump on one, and press play. You see it's playing it, but it's playing it over and over again. The reason it's playing it over and over again is because we've got the set timer by event. What we do is drag out from the return value and we will invalidate, clear and invalidate timer by handle. Add this to the end of play sound. And then what that will do is it will just allow this to play until we've played our entire list. So if we go ahead and press wink, it will only play it once. Yay. The problem that we're going to have here, though, is it's only going to be playing one note ever. So even if we were to, say, jump onto this note and then go down a note or two and press play, it's only going to play the first one that we pressed. The reason it's doing this is because it's only getting the first thing in the array, which is zero. So what we actually need to do here is we need to drag out from our note array and remove index like so. And then we'll clear the timer. Now, well, let's not let's not clear the timer. Let's press compile. 
and press do. do. Go back over here. See, it's ding dong. Cool. Right? Ding dong. But as soon as we've pressed another one, we've broken things. Okay. The reason we're breaking things is because our array is never really updating properly because we're only doing this thing once. So what we actually need to do is from here, we're going to set an is valid. And we'll say from our get is valid. If it's not valid, clear and invalidate the timer by the handle. So what that's going to do is it's just going to stop the event from running if there's nothing in our note array. And now if we play ding dong, then nothing. And then we get ding dong again. However, we cannot play it a second time because we're deleting it. Okay, so to have a system that's going to allow us to do this so that we can replay the song, because you don't want to have to type the song out every single time, right click the note array in the variable section. Ooh, we are killing everything, do nothing. All right, we will duplicate this and we're going to call this backup. And what we're going to do here is when we first press play, we're going to get our array of notes and we're going to set our backup to the array of notes like so. So as soon as we press play, it's going to get the entire selection of notes and put that into a backup. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say after we've finished and our timer has run out, we're going to set our array of notes to whatever's in our backup. And this should allow us to add notes to our array and then play them back more than once. There we go, pretty cool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a reset button because obviously now this is just going to play over and over again. What we can do though is we can say if we press this and then we press B, we can play that back. It's playing CB and now we can go, mm, maybe I want an E all the way down there as well. And we can play that back. And it's added it in, right? What we need is we need a way to say, well, I don't like that song. I don't want to have to restart the entire game up. So we will duplicate our play button. We're going to we're going to call this our reset button. We'll open this guy up. We're going to delete pretty much everything here. We don't need anything. We don't need any of this. We do still need the, the hit. Our construct is still empty, which is good. Our text render, we're going to set this to reset. And then we don't need our backups or our notes, but what we do need is a reference to the play button. So play... Oops play let's go button bp and we will make that an object reference and we're just going to call this play underscore ref drag this guy out and then what we're going to do is we're going to get a note arrays let's see we got the wrong one it's not our play button mm -hmm. oh we need to compile first compile Get. Oh, we got the wrong reference here. Play button. Underscore BP. We do not. It's called note and backup. There we go. It's finding it now. Get backup. God damn. Get note. Ah, we're finding the wrong thing here. All right, hold up. Because I've got more than one. Play button. Let's quickly rename this play button. Only on my end. You guys don't have to do this. This is because I had another one that's uh, backing up. I just rename this play button. New. Press save real quick. We'll go into the reset button. Play score button. New BP. There we go. That should now be fine. Drag this guy out. Get note, thank you, and we will get backup. 
And now what we're going to do with both of these things is we're just going to clear them. We're going to clear both. So if we press the reset button, it's going to get rid of what's in both arrays. No more backup. No more current play. Oh, it would help if we put a reset button down. And like before, what we then need to do with our reset button is we need to grab our reference. However, we need to make this public or exposed. And now we have our play ref and we can select the correct play button from our drop down. We can press play. We can say C, B, C. We play that. If we press reset and then we press play, it shouldn't play anything. Cool, working. Now the final thing that we need to do just to make sure that we've got this all set up correctly is right click and duplicate our white keys material and make our black keys material. Open this guy up, change the white to a black. There we are. Then we will right click our white keys. Duplicate this and call this our black key underscore BP. Then we're just going to change our text render to have white text instead of black text and change the white keys in the source material to black keys. Press compile here, open up the viewport because we're going to need this guy, drag him down into our level and then we will resize him. We don't want him to be as long and we don't want him to be as thick as the white keys. Oop, we don't want him to be that stubby. Just move that up to line and then we just need to move our text render also to better match our new key. Now black keys on a, a piano or a keyboard, you start with C and you've got two black keys. Then you have a gap, then, oh, <laughs> then you've got a gap, and then you go from F, G, and A, all have black keys on them, like so. And then your next black key would be here between the C and the D, but we're not going to put them there because we're done with that. Now what we need to do is just make sure that these all have the right notes. So we're going to go into our Piano Keys folder, and this is going to be our DB, this is going to be EB, this is going to be our GB. And then we're going to have AB and finally BB. Those are all of our flat notes. And if we press play, we've now got our black keys. And we can play them. They're a bit stubby, really, aren't they? We can press play. Oh. It's not sent them correctly. Ah, that's why. Because we haven't given them a reference. Always forgetting that reference. Eyedropper, pluck it down, and we play the notes. We play. There we go. So there we have it, a lovely little uh, Fortnite style keyboard. Epic, eat your heart out. Hire me, god damn it. <laughs> anyway. I hope some of you guys will have some fun with that. You can probably think up some pretty cool puzzles or gameplay mechanics using this kind of thing. It's actually a really neat little project to put together. As I say, in the description, you're going to find the... Um you're going to find the link to get the sound download files for this. And I'll also leave the correct notes for you guys to play that little bit of Tetris that was played at the beginning. Good job if you knew what that was. Um, and you'll also find things like my Twitch link and my uh, Discord and my Patreon. Anyway, thank you guys very, very much. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.